At Rescue Education, we have the best explanation every time. I'm Dr. B, and I'm going to help you easily and rapidly learn organic chemistry. If you like the video, you'll love my book. Learn more about it at rescueedu.com or hear more about it at the end of the video. The second semester book comes out in fall 2020. Let's talk about the nomenclature of alkenes and alkynes. Quickly review video 3.1 if you don't remember the basic IUPAC rules. First, let's look at the IUPAC nomenclature of alkenes. In alkenes, the longest chain containing the double bond is the parent. It may not be the longest chain overall, but it must contain the double bond. Change the A and E ending of the corresponding alkane to E and E. The double bond of an alkene has higher priority, that is, it is more important than alkyl and some other lower priority groups. Only the double bond is considered in finding the best possible numbering scheme. Number in both directions and give the double bond the lowest possible number. Then number alkyl and other lower priority groups based on this. Numbering is easy because you only worry about the lowest number for the alkene. In old IUPAC rules, the position of the double bond goes before the entire parent name. In new IUPAC rules, the position goes right before the ene part of the parent. You would use the name 2-butene in the old IUPAC rules and but2-ene in the new IUPAC. Most books still use the old IUPAC rules, so we will too. In cycloalkenes, the double bond is assumed to be at position 1 and 2 and is not numbered. The direction of the 1-2 numbering is determined by giving any substituents the lowest possible numbers. Molecules with two double bonds are called dienes, and molecules with three double bonds are called trienes. Change the A and E of the corresponding alkane to a diene or a triene. Here are some sample problems. Pause and try to name these compounds using IUPAC that is, systematic rules. The longest chain in the first problem is horizontal, but it is not the parent chain. The double bond must be included in the parent chain, and so it starts at the top double bond carbon and continues on the right. There is an isobutyl substituent on the parent. The parent has six carbons, and the alkane with six carbons is hexane. We change the a and E ending to E and E. This is an isobutyl hexene. Leave a space to number the double bond. Numbering is easy. The only consideration is that the double bond must get the lowest possible number, which is 1. The isobutyl group is then assigned position 2. It's a very common mistake to leave the 1 off in a case like this but there could be other isomers with the double bond shifted, for instance, to the two position. Leaving the one off leads to ambiguity. In the next example, the parent chain is horizontal and has eight carbons. The parent is an octene. We can already number from the right to give the alkene the lowest possible number. There are two methyl substituents. This is a dimethyl octene. We give the alkene position 3, the lowest possible number, and the methyls must then be at positions 7, 7. The next example is a cyclohexene with ethyl and methyl substituents. The ethyl is first in alphabetical order, so this is an ethyl methyl cyclohexene. Leave spaces for numbering the substituents. The double bond must be in position 1 and 2, so there is no need to number it. But which way do we go? Number in both directions. Choose the scheme giving the substituents the lowest number at the first point of difference. The schemes are 3, 5 going right, versus 4, 6 going left. 
three beats four at the first number. The first scheme wins. Methyl gets three and ethyl gets five. The last example is a dimethyl cyclohexadiene. The A-N-E ending of cyclohexane is changed to a diene. Leave spaces before the parent for numbering the double bonds. In considering numbering, you first want to give the double bonds the lowest possible numbers. In both directions, this is 1, 3. But where should the methyls go? If you number starting from the top, the methyls end up at the 5, 5 positions. If you number from the bottom, you get them at the 6, 6 positions. You would obviously pick the lowest numbers, so this is a 5,5-dimethyl-1,3-cyclohexadiene. There are two important common names of very simple alkenes which are used almost exclusively. These are ethylene and propylene. You should know two important double bond containing substituents. If you remove any hydrogen from ethylene, you get the vinyl group. If you remove the sp3 hydrogen of propylene, that is from the methyl carbon, you get the allyl group. These groups are used in common and systematic nomenclature. The first compound is always called by its common name, vinyl bromide. And the third compound is always called by its common name, allyl alcohol. Vinyl cyclohexane is a systematic name in which the vinyl is a substituent on the parent cyclohexane. Likewise, allyl cyclobutane is a systematic name. Now let's talk about the IUPAC rules for alkynes. Alkyne nomenclature is entirely analogous to alkene nomenclature. Triple and double bonds have almost identical priorities. Again, the longest chain containing the triple bond is the parent, and the A-N-E ending of the corresponding alkane is changed to Y-N-E. Triple bonds have higher priority than alkyls, so you worry only about giving the triple bond the lowest possible number. Finally, lower priority substituents such as alkyls are numbered based on the location of the triple bond. Molecules with both a double and triple bond are called enines. Change the parent A-N-E ending of the parent alkane to enine. Number in each direction and use the scheme that has the lowest possible number at the first point of difference. If both directions give exactly the same numbering scheme, then the double bond wins because it has slightly higher priority. The common name of the simplest alkyne is acetylene. It is used exclusively. Here are some sample problems. Pause and try to name these molecules using the systematic IUPAC rules. In the first problem, the longest chain containing the triple bond is horizontal and has nine carbons. We can already number from the right to give the triple bond the lowest possible number. The parent alkane with nine carbons is nonane. We change the A and E ending to Y and E, which gives us nonine. The triple bond is at the three position. There are two methyls, so this is a dimethyl nonine. Finally, the methyls are assigned the 8-8 eight eight positions. The next molecule has six carbons, a double, and a triple bond. This is a hexenine. The number for the triple bond must go directly before the ine, so leave a space here. The number for the double bond goes before the entire parent name. Let's number in both directions. We get 1, 4 from left to right versus 2, 5 from right to left. 
One beats two at the very first number, so one four is correct. The triple bond gets one, and the double bond gets four. The last example is also a hexenine, but with different numbering. In both directions, we get one five. So it's a tie. In this case, we use the fact that the double bond has slightly higher priority and wins the one position. This molecule is one hexene five ine. We'll briefly discuss two important aromatic derived groups called the phenyl and benzyl. We don't cover aromatic nomenclature until second semester, but these are used frequently in first semester and it's good to know them. The phenyl group, pH for short, is derived by removing a hydrogen from benzene. The benzyl group, BN for short, is derived by removing one of the sp3 hydrogens that is a methyl hydrogen from the aromatic molecule toluene. These aromatic groups can be used in both common and systematic names. Let's quickly go through some examples so you can see where you find them. In the first example, the long chain has eight carbons while the benzene ring has only six. The parent is the part of the molecule with more carbon, so this is an octane with a phenyl substituent. It is important to put in the one for the phenyl and locate it properly. There are several other isomers in which the phenyl is somewhere else on the octane, for instance at position two, and so we need to unambiguously locate it. In the second example, the alkane chain has only two carbons and it is the substituent. This is ethylbenzene. The ethyl is assumed to be at position one and is not numbered. The common name of the last molecule is used almost exclusively. This compound is named as a bromide with a benzyl substituent attached to it. This is called benzyl bromide. There is a more systematic IUPAC name, but it would not be used by working chemists. If you're using my book, I encourage you to do the extra test your knowledge problems for this topic so you can be sure you really understand it. All the answers are at the back. This video is closely based on my first semester organic chemistry self-help book. The book is organized into standalone topics so you can quickly teach yourself a few troublesome topics. It's also logical and organized from beginning to end so you can easily learn the whole semester if you need to. My self-help book is particularly valuable in difficult learning situations, but you can also use it to get an edge. If you want to learn more about my books and videos, how to get the books, or my future projects, go to rescueedu.com.